Thank you, everyone. My name is Oren Rubin. I'm the CEO and founder of Testem. And yes, I always have a bad hair day. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've been doing for the last 20 years building products, for, uh, especially for developers. Uh, I always like to build stuff that I, I'm using myself. Um, and always doing stuff. The, the one on the right is things that I do on my leisure time and uh, helping out the community. Um, so let's get started. I want to focus, uh, and this is what I do. Uh, that, that's what I've been doing for the last two and a half years is focusing on how to take uh, flackiness of tests. Who here ever suffered from flacky tests? Oh, yeah. So um, it became my challenge to see how, uh, how he can solve flackiness of tests. Uh, and he started researching uh, what's the cause of that. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of the things, not all of the things. There's, of course, there's the, there's, there's the assertions that we know that Adam talked about at Applitools. Uh, we talked, not, not, not a lot of people are talking about how to set up correctly. Um, it's not enough, so if, if someone has an idea for a talk for uh, next time, that would be awesome. And uh, I, I'm going to focus on the, on the stimuli, on the locating elements. Um, and because we saw that there's a lot of people that actually suffer from that. So I'm going to focus on the stimuli part. And give me that. So the stimuli part, you know, it's just clicking on stuff. So I'll try, by the way, to um, go forward fast with the, the things that you probably know. And uh, maybe it's a good time to ask. Who here has over five year experience in uh, test automation? Oh my god, you're so good. Ah. Who here has, uh, keep your hands up, uh, who has more than three? Who has more than one? Oh my god, you're so good. So now everyone give yourself a high five to the one next to you, because you're so cool. <laughs> and of course, the idea here is just to meet other people. So that's the best thing. So we'll focus on um, the locators, because you're all, you know everything, so we can skip the query languages. Um, by the way, who here uses CSS selectors? And who here uses XPath? Oh, wow, that's a, that's, that's a lot. Um, so does everyone know the differences between XPath and CSS and the things you can do here and you can do there? Whoever who knows? Yes, let's go. We're getting to the nice properties. Um, so we, we need to find elements. And finding elements, we want to have, uh, there's, there's a few options that we got. And you all know them. Uh, but I'm going to, I tried to prove at the beginning that, that things like record playback can work. And, uh, and that's why I have a quiz. Uh, let's see if you guys can be a good record playback uh, uh, machine. Um, so uh, finding an element, and that's why record playback uh, usually failed, is if, you're, if you record a, a clicking on the, that play button, and now you want to play it back, you, you have to remember, wait, wait a second, how did I find that? And so let's try with a few examples. So the first one is, is an ID. And we, we were trying, we were, we were clicking play again, we're playing, and it doesn't work. And then we have to say, ask ourselves, why does it work? So we, ha we always have a few symptoms that we see. Uh, when we're looking uh, using either jQuery or something, it doesn't find any element. And I just ran it again. So if I'm using find element by an ID, and it doesn't help, uh, we can't find the element. So does anyone have any idea why, uh, why it happened? ID is oh my god, you're so good, yes. So random generated ideas are the worst thing that can happen for uh, Reco playback tools. Ah. Then the, the second thing, well, it did come up empty. Uh, we couldn't find it. And actually, I know that it's not a random generated ID. So what could it be? What happened? Uh, does anyone have any idea that I know something that um, I know anyone other than random generated IDs? Anyone have a clue? It's oh, so, so the code, I think that one was just simply, it's too obvious and that's the code change. So mo most projects you have, it's kind of like as per there's well, someone doing the, the, the development of a product and uh, someone else is doing the, uh, the testing, and when you have that separation, uh, then usually you have the, the flackiness, then, then some, someone changes the code, and then the, the tests are not updated. Um, so there's, even, there's, there's stuff that are even more trivial than the one you mentioned. Um, 
If I couldn't find it, um, and of course there's two other reasons that I showed earlier didn't happen. There's the, I, knew, I know there's a new version, so this is another bug that I found somewhere. Uh, have, anyone have an idea what else weren't can happen? The people uh, who here have a problem with iframes? <laughs> So iframe is another problem, of course, that, uh, that you have to find first the, the, the target iframe. So that means you have to find the element, which is the iframe. And of course, that can be uh, tricky. Uh, the source isn't always good enough because that can change. So you have to use other properties as well. And we're still, by the way, we're still with that simple um, ID. And that's another example. Uh, when you actually found another element, did that ever happen to someone? Oh, yeah. There's two IDs. <laughs> I've seen projects, seen so many projects. So uh, the, the, the browser doesn't, it's a requirement that the ID would be a unique identifier. That's why it's named ID. Uh, but <laughs> he doesn't enforce that. So we, I saw so many cases where, uh, where you have the same ID. Um, and this one, the last one, uh, I think that's the worst thing I ever saw. Uh, it actually worked 50% of the time. He either found nothing or did find. And you know you're not going to believe it. Yeah, the other one had two bodies. I actually, I, your old frameworks, they used to generate more than one body in an HTML. Oh my god, what's going on? Oh, that, ah. Uh. So then we moved on. We said, oh, wait a second. Okay, so we're not going to use ID. Okay, ID sucks. So let's move to class, right? Because we have a lot of classes. Usually you have, for the visualization, you have classes. So let's use them. Uh, who uses classes here? Yeah, of course. Uh, but then, of course, you change the, the styling, and someone changes the class name. It's, again, it's a, uh, when, when there's a difference between the project and the, uh, the development project and the testing project, those things happen, because you refactor a lot. So we do a lot of refactoring. And uh, so then we need to choose. If there's a class, what, how do you choose which one? Because the role has the same class, because it's a list of items, right? And then you see, uh, especially in record playback, you see all those kind of things. Uh, please don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, so there's, I, I guess, the, um, the number one rule of test automation is, uh, um, is don't use sleep. Sleep is a source of all even. The second one is don't use nth child or, uh, or spin, uh, div, and spite span. And so, I can show you the rest, that the rest usually change text. You have different languages as well. So uh, most of the properties are, we can't depend on them. And, uh, and so we have two options. One is forcing everyone to actually have their own, uh, their own unique testing uh, identification that doesn't change. Uh, that's one option. And I'm going to show you a different one. By the way, who here is, uh, is familiar with page object? Yes. That's what I mean. It's not going to talk about page objects. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a, but there's a link there if, if anyone wants to, how to do page objects. Um, but I guess the only thing that in uh, page object, the only thing in page object is who's using the web element and who hears if someone still using the, 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 um, uh, is, is concatenation, the strings. Does someone else still concatenate strings? Very well. But, uh, I, well, there wasn't one, one place when I saw the concatenation of string that was helpful, uh, which is uh, uh, instead of using web elements and then finding another way web element size, there's a concatenation of the strings. When you concatenate strings and then find, you actually find, uh, you, you do the search all over again. And that usually helps uh, with people that have um, bad Angular uh, apps that actually refreshing the same element, it refreshes every few seconds, you get the same element, it looks exactly the same, but it's a new element. So you won't get the, how do you call that, a stale element exception? Did someone ever had those? Yeah. <laughs> um, so those are the big differences. And so like a playback, that's, that's the problems that he had. And I thought, I was a, uh, I used to hate record playback and telling everyone for years not to use it. Uh, and now I'm actually advocating using, uh, I'm trying to tell you and convince you that record playback is the way to solve the flackiness of tests. Oh my God. So let me show you. Um, I don't, we don't have much time to go over everyone, but I do want to show something. And hopefully the internet will be fast enough so I can, can show a live demo. Um, 
Uh, let's see. So record playback is when you um, when you use your app, uh, uh, your real app. On the left is an app I'm showing uh, the demo on, and the, there's a system that actually records what I'm doing on the. Um, and now I can play it back again. Uh, and of course, uh, I had nobody look. <laughs> and now we have, uh, we have something that can play back. And uh, the question, of course, is how can this? I just showed you uh, that this is impossible. And now I'm going to try to show you that this is, that this is going to have anything that you wanted and more. Um, so uh, let's start with this. Um, so. First of all, let me, let me group all those together. Uh, let's call it account.login. Uh, so it's kind of like an extractive function. Uh, let's, let's, uh, I want to record something. Let's record a simple click. So um, my solution was, um, is instead of using one property, I showed you that um, a lot of properties. I mean, I showed you that using every property out there is probably sucks. Uh, and the solution I, 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 we came up with was actually use all the properties. So the statistical analysis means that you're instead of using just prop one property and not and you're using all of them. And I'm ta not talking about fallback, just try the first one and if it doesn't work, try the second one. Um, and we're talking always use all the different properties that you have on your app. That, that's gonna be a lot. Uh, the tricky part of course is optimizing. If you have thousands of locators and different ways of finding an element, uh, if you optimize that for 15 milliseconds, then you, you, there's, there's so many ways actually finding the element, then what are the chances that you've changed all the different properties? The text, the ID, the class? Well, you probably change one of them. For example, if you have random generated IDs, then the ID, class, the ID property here, uh, that would be something else. But we can still make sure, like doing a statistical analysis, and saying, well, wait a second. So the random the ID points to the element, but all the other attributes are pointing to the other one, and what does it make sense that it's probably that one? Um, so that's nice, but maybe it's not good enough. How do I know I should listen to that locator and not that one? So the question is, you want two things. If you're, chance, if you're finding someone that's 99% are pointing to someone, and there's one that actually points to that one, uh, why don't we flag that locator so that uh, we'll give it a different score, a lower score. We'll say, wait, let's not listen to him. If you have a friend that keeps saying, recommending bad movies, you actually you stop listening to him. So you, uh, you say, okay, if I, if I have no one, if no other friend is recommending a movie and he has a recommendation, then I might use it. But I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna use him, his, uh, uh, I'm gonna use his help uh, less than, I'm, uh, than the others. So this is kind of the similar. You have those different uh, scaling, and, uh, and the whole idea is actually, so the more you run your test, the more stable you are, because the weight keeps changing. So uh, by the way, I forgot to mention at the beginning, I really love questions. So you don't have to wait till the end, uh, because at the end, of course, there's not going to be time for questions. <laughs> so the trick is for you to uh, ask at any time. So, and, um, and of course, what I wanted to say is that finding elements is actually the most important thing in, in, when you're working with UI. Uh, when you think about it, it's not just about the, the, the login. Uh, let's, uh, let's, if you want to do some kind of validation, so you want to do text validation. Text validation basically means uh, just finding an element and then making sure the text is the same. Or instead of text, you can put regular expression, et cetera but it basically is the same, or your variables as well. Just by defining the elements, that's, a hard, that's the hard part. Uh, if you wanna have, instead of uh, text, you wanna have vi uh, visual validations. Uh, so this is, for example, we added Apply Tools. Uh, so it's basically the same, it's just focusing on what you want. You use the arrows to find an element. Oh, this is the arrow, this is the element that I want, and now I just wanna need to validate instead of the text, I wanna validate the, the pixels. Um, and, and of course you want to embed, there's, there's things that the record playback sucks at, uh, which is uh, reusing, so we did grouping and we can use it again, again, uh, go away. 
so we can use this uh, account.login again as another instance and pass different arguments to it. Uh, but of course, there's, we always need code. So for this, you can add a custom action, which is basically a step, this uh, right here, uh, which is you write code. So let's do an example. Let's do search, and we can use dependency injection right here and says, before running this code, I want you to find this nice element, and I'll give it a name, input. And once we did that, we can say value seconf. And we have, uh, we have the business logic using code. Sometimes you need random generated things or you need ifs and everything. So you do need code, but you still use the, 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 the machine learning and the, the adaptive learning to actually improve and those, to find those locators for you and, uh, and to have it someone, uh, um, uh, you, you separate between finding the elements, which is uh, the non-stable part, and the business logic, which, which is yours, which is already stable. So, and then all you have to do is click play, it's gonna run, or use some, uh, uh, some command line interface to actually run it through, from the CI. Uh, but basically it's the same, just now we have to run those tests, and of course it's just, you need a Selenium grid to run it upon. Uh, that makes sense, I, uh, hopefully. Um, and, and the nice thing is that there's a nice, there's an advantage of using those kind of visual programming. I know that everyone hates it. Uh, I used to hate it too. But I, there's so many good things that I've found in those. For example, oh, wait a second. Now I have the screenshots in the, one, in the same place. I can see it side by side. And I can see what's going on. And when I have an error, I know exactly what happened because I have not just the, the test results, it's actually on, on the steps. Imagine in your code that you have Vs, uh, in your ID that you had next to your code, you have Vs and what, what uh, what broke or not? Yeah, imagine that you have, uh, you have the console log, you, know, you have arrows, you have network arrows. Imagine that something fails, you just see an X right there instead of a V, and then you, have, you click on it and you see the network arrows or the console log arrows that you had. So that can help uh, in, uh, finding the root cause analysis. So, so those kind of visual things can be uh, not too bad. Uh, it can, of course, you can separate, nice thing is that you can separate between the framework and someone else using it, passing parameters. So, and there's one more thing that actually I found that is actually super nice. Let me see. Uh, and, and that's actually reporting bugs. Uh, so I try to do something else, uh, which is, if I have a bug, let's just say one plus one equals to four, right? Everyone knows that. So let's just say there's a bug, and we know that the, the Google's calculator sucks, and one plus one, it says two. But we know it's a bug, so of course we know it's two. Um, so we capture that bug, and, and now we're gonna say, oh, this is a bug, and you can add text, etc., and say it's a bug. And the nice thing is that you can publish now, uh, should be four, and so that's the nice thing is that, wait a second, we can ask the, would it be nice for the developers to get, instead of getting uh, uh, some text, just only text saying, well, you have to type what, what went wrong, you have the text already, and not just you have the text, you have the screenshots, you have video, like screenshot for every step, you have the video, and you have an automated test. So think about it when you start, if someone has a bug, you submit an automated test, and then an automated test that fails and then you fix the bug and then it passes, then you say, just add it to that test suite that guarantees that it passes. Uh, so then someone gets a test automation out of that. So uh, that, wouldn't that be nice? Um, so this is kind of, we can do, I think we can do even better than that because we can actually add some text validation and say, wait a second, it should be, that shouldn't be two. Um, that should be four. And we can even submit, and now we even submitted not just a test, we submitted a failing test. Uh, a failing test is much better than, a, than a, just a test scenario of how to reproduce. You have the expected and the actual, which is nice. So this, after a few times, it's, it's gonna shout and say, oh, I expected a four and it's got a two. So come on, come on, give me questions. Come on, people. Who's got a question? 
Yes. Can you generate code from this yes? Uh, so not yet, but oh, let's repeat the question. Can you generate code uh, out of it? So there it's on the way. And whoever wants to, if, is, would there someone be like to be the beta for the code, export the code? So raise your hand. Yes. So those people, I'll show uh, my email. And you can, um, so then you could, so now you have my email on Twitter. And when, once the, the export the code, uh, so I can send you uh, uh, the beta. Next question, yes. So there's a there's a test suite which is you, you put uh, uh, you're you're putting uh, each test in a test suite. You you, know, you can manage that. Uh, it's kind of similar as um, as uh, Gmail. So you what you do is you add uh, let's save it. Where's the where's the save test? Once you saved it, you can add labels. So let's just save it. And then you have, when you're running in the command line, you can say, I want to run all the tests with uh, some test suite. And uh, next, yes. Yes. Uh, data driven, of course. Uh, let me show you. Uh, we would not want to wait for internet, stuff like that. Um, so data driven, the question is data driven the, the, um, development. So of course you can. Uh, what you do is you have your return an array. Uh, of course, if you can do it asynchronously, you get the files that you use uh, promises. Uh, so you return an array, and inside the array, you, what you do here is you can specify a few objects or get it dynamically, as I said. So you can say use uh, username, then equals to I don't know, Danny, or I don't know, cool Anand. So that's the username here. And if, of course, Rico is going to run, you can run it the same uh, several times for each. Uh, you'll have a different username uh, and password, for example. So that is awesome. So and then you can use, once you have that, instead of, the, instead of using the hard-coded values, so this is just a JavaScript expression. So you can use day.now or you can even use your username, that the variable that you used. So, does it answer your question? Great. Uh, questions? Yes. Hi. Um, I don't know what you did. Um, it sounds like you're using some kind of AI to work out which are the best IDs. So, is that is that sort of an application type level that kind of gets better and better? This because systems seem. Uh, so, so yes and no. <laughs> uh, I mean by yes, that means I'll repeat the question. Um, so he said a lot of things, but the question was <laughs> whether, uh, whether the system has to learn again, again, from on, a, on every new project, does it, or any new test that it has to learn again, or does it count also on a previous uh, thing that it's learned? Um, so there are things that you learn from the specific uh, test or uh, project. And there are things that you've learned. So what I mean by that is that uh, we are HTML agnostic. doesn't care if you're running Ember, uh, Angular, or uh, uh, React. And on the other hand, the second thing is that we do have those presets that actually change it because we see a lot of projects and everyone's for example, I'll give you an example, uh, Ember uh, Action ID. That's a different it's property that's always random generated for a specific, uh, uh, for a specific framework, for M uh, the Ember framework. And it always has, eventually, has lower uh, weights. Always, for everyone. And there wasn't any single case. So the, the starting point for a new uh, project will have it at a lower, uh, lower weight. So does that answer your question? Yeah, the more you run, you can, you can learn. Actually, you can, um, you can improve. So we can even show you, let's show an example. Um, if I, for example, let's say I hit a click here. 
And before I click the improve, I'll, try to, I'll do it right now like dynamically. So you have an ID here, which is convert a query. And let me do something here quickly here. So I'll try to do the improve. Uh, um, so I'll change the, uh, that's the vision, is perfect. So we change the ID now. Um, and then I'm now going to, let's see if I can do an improve, like right here. I'll tell you, OK, this is, try to improve and learn. Uh, and see that it, uh, he doesn't like me. Let me see if I change that. But the, the idea, of course, is that, uh, and that it can improve. And then, um, and every time you run it, it improves and sees the different values and updates. So the answer is yes. Any more questions? Cool. By the way, as um, who here, uh, when you're talking about uh, frameworks, when you're building your frameworks, uh, do you, do you, does he can ask the developers to actually add their own testing ID? Is there someone that actually forces the developers to write their own IDs? That's about uh, 5%. So do you get into, <coughs> And out of that, uh, do you guys see any objection? Was it hard? Uh, the, re the rest of the people, I'm not talking about you because you succeeded. So the rest of the people, do you see the, uh, who here had the hard time convincing the, the teams actually uh, putting those uh, IDs? Uh, it's about the same. Uh, great. Um, so um, so my, my con so this is the first thing that we wanted to, sh to show that uh, how to how to do statistical analysis and um, and I've been asked for a few more questions usually uh, like uh, what happens when you f you you find the wrong element so it's nice to see that um, it, it, it even happened there is actually there's a uh, the, the, this automatic maintenance it does reduce the, the the maintenance by a lot because it does that a lot. We saw a few like five times in the last uh, year that it actually found a different element. Uh, the, the nice thing is that it's, it's okay because there's never going to be a case where, uh, where even though it found a different element, a click on a different element, then the test passed. Why? Because usually after clicking an element, there's eventually there's a validation. So the click is not the validation. There's, all, there's a validation afterwards. And then that validation usually failed because you, you clicked on something else. So um, if it re saved you 95% of the time, of course, the, the, the thing that you should be scared about, what happens if it clicks another element, and then I'm, uh, I'm, I'm saying that the task passed, and though, but, but I still have a bug. So this never happened. So that, that was something that actually scared me uh, when I got this started a year ago. And uh, after seeing millions of tests running, I haven't seen a case of that, that this happened. So on the other hand, this morning I said that this, is, this conference uh, is so awesome, and the organizer here amazing, by the way. So, and <laughs> thank you. And then it, it got paused in the, in the beginning, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, it was all because of me, because I said it's awesome. So, um, so again, this is, any, uh, this, is, this is my email, so everyone can feel free to, uh, to talk to me. I'll be happy to answer, uh, I'll still be here, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. So thank you very much. <laughs>